Okay, so, so that's the way this inverse notation works. I want to call back, this is the first example I showed you last time. But I gave you a second example as well. I showed you up on the screen. We went through it fairly rapidly, um, and the bell kind of went on us. But I wonder if you remember <coughs> example two. Okay, it was this guy, right? It was this guy. Now, x squared plus one, what would happen if I do this switching around business, okay? So now I'm talking in terms of f and x instead of y and x. So I'm not going to switch x and y's, I'm going to switch these guys, right? So let's find what the inverse of this is, okay? To find the inverse, I swap inputs and outputs. Now this is what we wrote before, we wrote this last lesson in terms of x and y's, but it looks ever so slightly different when you've got these x's and f's. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Um, firstly, I can see that, you know how we wrote down, uh, no, I dropped it off the board, um, that you've got the area of a circle and it's a function, right? So therefore, really, in terms of function notation, I ought to write it like this. But no one writes it like that. You haven't been writing it like that for years. You kind of know intuitively. Area is not just a number, it's a function. Okay, that's what it stands for. So I'm going to do the same thing here, okay? I'm going to leave out that of x. I'm just going to say f equals x squared plus 1. And I just want you to have in the back of your mind, f isn't just a number, it's actually a function. Okay? Right, now when I switch, when I switch, right, I'll put that x there where the f used to be. Okay? And where I put x, well now I'm working out the inverse function. Okay, so I'm going to put in there f with a negative 1. Okay, so now I'm talking about the inverse. I've switched them over. Okay, squared plus 1. Are you okay with that? <coughs> okay, can we, um, can we rearrange this a little bit so that just like I have here, I've got f inverse, I make that the subject. Can we do it? Do you think we can? Yeah. Let's have a shot. Can you give me a suggestion? What might I do as my first line? Yeah, good. I'm going to subtract one from both sides. Hmm, that seems familiar. Let's just quickly do it. Uh, x take away 1. Squared. Okay. What do I do now? Square root. Yeah, the opposite of squaring is taking the square root. But watch out, right? Uh, taking the square root will look like this. Taking the square root over here will look like this. But something's missing. Something's missing, isn't it? Okay, a plus or minus is missing, right? Do you know why the plus or minus is missing? When you square, right? This is saying, well, what, what number can you square that will give you back this, okay? Now, you've seen this with like easy numerical examples before, right? What's the number that you square that gives you 25? And the answer is, well, five is one of them, but it's not the only one, is it, right? You can get the negative as well. Okay, negative 5, you square it, and just like we saw in the morning, um, the negatives will cancel. So here, it's not just the positive square root. I have to include this guy. Do you remember that? Okay. All right, now, let's tidy this up. I'm going to write this guy on the left-hand side. Now that I've finished doing all my manipulation, I'll put, I'll put this back where it belongs. Okay? And then I write this. Now, this is both really good but also really bad, right? Because we're talking about inverse functions this whole time, right? Inverse functions. Go back. Go back to like last week's notes. What is a function? What's the, what was our definition of a function? We talked about like currency and stuff. A function is, like it's a rule that will take exactly one input and give you what? One output. Exactly one output, right? Exactly one in, exactly one out. I have a huge problem here, right? If you give me one in, this one symbol single-handedly says, I'll give you two outputs, right? Do you see that? I mean, just as a quick example. Example, let's put in a number like, say, oh, I don't know, sorry. Um, 17. <coughs> 17, okay? When I evaluate this guy, I'm going to go plus or minus, square root of. I'm just going to faithfully replace all my x's with 17s, okay? 17, take 1, which of course is 16. And so I've got two numbers. Two numbers. 
this is not a function, right? This is, in fact, what's it called when it's not a function? It starts with R. It's a relation. Like these two quantities, they are connected. They are related. That's fine. But they're related like, like a circle is. Okay, I'm getting two numbers out. Okay, so this is in fact not an inverse function. So I'm just going to write that. Okay, this is not an inverse function. Okay, um, and the reason why is it doesn't just have one output for every input. Um, at least in this case, and I only need one, um, it's got two, right? Or I could have three or four, depending on the function you get, you'll get a different inverse, okay? It is an inverse, what do we call it again? With an R? Relation. A relation. Right? It is an inverse relation. I get two outputs for one input. <coughs> Question? Okay. 